popular proverb goes, you can't have your cake and eat it too. It's been around a long time and documented as far back as 1538 in England. The point of the proverb is to say that if you eat the cake, it's not there anymore, so you don't have it. It's gone. Well, today we take up the challenge. We're making cake West Coast style. It's cedar wrapped cake with charred and dried strawberries, basil simple syrup and balsamic. Then we're eating it too. Easy come, easy go. I'm Garrett Shack, and that's what we're cooking on the coast. Today we have our cake and we're eating it too. Cedar wrapped cake with charred and dried strawberries, basil syrup, and balsamic. Let's get started. Okay, so there's a few steps to this dessert, but it's going to be well, well worth it, all right? First thing we wanna do is dry, oven dry, some strawberries. I'm gonna take the husk off here, and then just try and thinly slice these as thin as you can. There we are. We're gonna do a whack of these, probably, you know, one or two strawberries here, depending on how many, this recipe actually makes six cakes. So one or two strawberries, we're just looking for some nice thin chips that'll help give our uh, dish a little bit of crunch and some, and some interest. People would be like, wow, where did you get these strawberry chips? They're fantastic. Okay, really simple to do too. Nice, fresh, easy at home. Great way to preserve strawberries if you're uh, out doing the you pick thing in the fields, picking all your own. Let's get these over to our little pan here. I've just lined it with some parchment paper and you'll see, that because we're, we're using nice, nice strawberries here, we don't have to worry about having adding any extra sugar or anything like that. Pop these over. Spread them out nice and evenly. You don't want any overlapping or anything like that. Kind of give them a little bit of room so they get lots of air circulation in there. There we go. And that'll do for now. You don't want to, you don't want to stand here and uh, watch me slice strawberries all day, right? Let's get on with the recipe. So there they are into uh, about 200 degree oven, if you can go a little lower, 175 to 200 degrees, and just fire them in there for probably, I don't know, two hours, check them, turn them over, and then if they continue, if they need more uh, drying, then go right ahead and, and let them dry in there. Okay, in they go. Perfect, look how lucky I am to have a double stacked oven there, hey, isn't that awesome? Now, let's turn our attention to the cake and the uniqueness of this cake. This is West Coast through and through, we're using and for those of you that follow the show, you may have seen these cedar wraps before. Really thinly sliced cedar, and it's been soaking in water, so it's a little bit more pliable here. We're gonna wrap it up like this. Now this cedar is a little bit hard to far find at the moment, but I think you'll start to see it popping up in uh, uh, specialty sort of kitchenware stores and all that kind of stuff before, you, before long here. Especially now that it's been on our famous TV show, Cooking on the Coast, right? Now we're just gonna wrap, tie this up so that it holds together. And you gotta be a little bit uh, skilled here in the art of tying. One-handed, there we go. And now you're wondering, well, okay, if, great, now you got this mold, but as soon as I pour my batter in there, it's just gonna pour it all out. Well, the trick here is a little bit of aluminum foil, aluminum foil, and we're just gonna build sort of like a little base around the bottom of it here. Okay, folding it up, and that's gonna keep all our cake ingredients inside, long enough anyway for it to set. There we are. Okay, we don't have to be super precise with how that looks. That, uh, that uh, aluminum foil will come off a little bit later on. Okay, there's our dishes done up. Now, let's, uh, let's get to mixing our ingredients. We want to do a little, a little sifting here, so we want to make it nice and fine. So we're going to add our sugar and our flour right into the sieve here. There we go. And we've got some baking powder and some baking soda here. In it goes. Awesome, and always, in any baking, a nice pinch of salt. There we are. And now we're just gonna gently sift that through. Don't go crazy here. If you start banging on it super hard, you're gonna have flour everywhere, trust me. You can kinda see it's already starting to fly away on me a little bit, so be gentle with it. There we go. Look, found some time in there. Good thing we sifted. Okay, now, just gonna make a little hole in the center here and start adding all of our wet ingredients. We're gonna add one egg, one whole egg, and one egg yolk. So one whole egg, in it goes. One egg yolk, using, our, using the shell as our uh, separating device here. There we are. We've got some oil, canola oil here. 
This is going to help retain moisture in this cake. It's going to make it nice and moist. There we go. Orange juice. Oranges, strawberries in this recipe. Oranges and cedar, when you smell them together, they just smell so great. Buttermilk. Now this is really going to be where we put our uh, skills to the test here to see if our recipe actually works out. Now we're going to give it a little stir. Starting slowly in the middle, we want to break up the egg, let those things incorporate, and then we just work our way around to get it all in there and mixed up nicely. Okay. You see I've got an orange there, I definitely want to add some zest. You know, there's lots of oils and lots of flavor in the zest of an orange. So we're going to add that to it too, but not till the end, otherwise it just sticks to my uh, whisk here. Okay. There we are. Now you're probably wondering, like, why use cedar? Well, one, it adds an amazing flavor, and why not use it? It's certainly west coast, uh, about as west coast as it gets, right? And those cedar trees are just incredible. They can live in the wild for up to, like, you know, 300 years. Where else would you find a cedar tree but in the wild, I suppose, hey? <laughs> All right. There we are. And then, like I said, I'm going to zest some of this in there. I want to use the fine side here because we just want that flavor. We don't want, like, pieces of orange just getting stuck in our teeth or anything like that. Lock it in there. Oh, it smells so good. I would almost do this just for fun, not even to use it in a recipe or anything, but just so you can, just so you can smell the oils coming off of there. Lovely. Bright orange color in there. Looks spectacular. Okay. And then we'll use our spatula here just to fold it all in. And then we're ready to go to our, uh, go to our pan. So I'm going to bring that over to the cutting board. Like so. You can see I've got them all wrapped up already. And then, make some room here. I want to scoop it out because I don't want to make a huge mess. I definitely want to make sure that, that all gets sort of nicely into our, into our vessels. So we'll start on the far side. In it goes. And we want to fill them sort of halfway up, I think. There we are, because this is going to rise due to our eggs and our uh, baking soda and powder. There we are. All right. That's the fun part, hey? Did you know that cedar actually acts as an insect repellent? Pretty cool. That's why a lot of furniture and and uh, you'll find like cedar balls or cedar uh, pieces in your in your um, closet because it acts like a moth repellent. There we go. And it just smells great. I mean, it smells just like a sauna, doesn't it? And who doesn't like a sauna? There we are. Now preheated the oven, 325 degrees. We're going to just make sure that these are all kind of neatly separated so the air circulation again and fire right into the oven. Preheated, 325. Middle rack, in it goes, voila, and now we can just let the whole kitchen just start to smell like cedar and delicious white cake. We'll be back later in the show to pull together our cedar wrapped cake with chard and dried strawberries, basil simple syrup and balsamic. But first, following the break, we're going to get out of the kitchen. You'll want to stick around for that. the bustling Fisherman's Wharf at one of the most iconic fish and chip shops in the entire West Coast. I'm at Barb's Fish and Chips with Nat. How are hey, you, Nat? Welcome. Hey, pleasure to be here, mate. Thanks so much for having us. I'm pretty, ex pleasure. pretty excited to see what all happens back in this place. Now, I know Barb is kind of a, it's a staple for fish and chips in Victoria, for sure. Uh, what can you tell me about it? Well, we just recently celebrated our 32nd anniversary. Wow, that's so fantastic. What's unique about us is we <laughs> offer good food and offer lots of it. Right? Keep it simple it. and keep it consistent. Yeah, super high volume, hey? Yeah. Yeah, that's exciting. Well, should we get in there before the rush starts? Yeah, let's or what? do it. Let's do okay, it now. Let's go. Yeah. Perfect. All right, Nad. Well, I can't wait to get started on this. And right. as we know, the quintessential part of fish and chips is the is the batter, right? So I'm glad that you're going to show us a little bit about your uh, your technique here. So. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I've got my portion of uh, soda water here. All right. It's going to pour into my bucket, and then I'm going to get some flour going. And now you don't want to just use just straight water, right? Like there's no, a, there's I a, a it. certain. I, I mean, some places do a beer batter, which is really nice. I mean, yeah. I love beer batter. But here we use a soda water, and so I'm just mixing it here. Uh -huh. And the aim is for a very specific barb standard consistency, right? Okay, like yeah. It, and it's really hard because it's 
We don't really have an exact measurement for it that I can even tell you about. It kind of comes with experience and uh, after it you've been here for a while, you, you kind of figure it out, eh? And it kind of varies too, depending on how humid the area is. Ah, oh, that makes right? sense. Yeah, you have to take that and into so account, don't you? so because we open from spring until fall, we have very different climates that we're playing with down here, and especially being right on the water. So here we are, we're getting pretty close to the consistency that I want. All right. Very, very close. And now are you like a purist in the sense that you don't want any lumps in there? Or are you really trying to get it nice and smooth? I, I, I would like it nice and smooth. Okay, but yeah. we don't want to overmix either. We just, it produces more gluten, right? Yeah, fair enough. It makes yeah. a more glutinous batter. So here, okay, so this I am happy with. Nice. All right, nice. so. And now what else is in that batter? I know, I know this is not here. just, uh, you know, just flour. It's definitely not just flour. So, <laughs> so right? what I'm looking at here is flour. We've got baking powder. Uh, we've got some... Uh, Parsley leaves here. Oh, nice! Right, nice. and uh, part of it too is it's not just to look different, but also that we can uh, differentiate between our different fish that we serve. We serve uh, cod, halibut, salmon, and in this way, uh, this sort of a visual. Cool. Yeah. And so, which one are we doing today, and how does this uh, now play out some, here? Let's cook, cook up some uh, local halibut. Oh, fantastic! Let's do it. Love halibut. Okay, so I'm just gonna pour this on the line here. Get close mm. and ready for myself to work with. Gonna roll our piece of fish in a little bit of flour. Nice, and yeah, dredge it to, first. Yeah, I just wanna be able to coat it all over, right? Okay. And then from here, drop here. And this is a gnat thing, right, right. I wiggle on the way out. Wiggle right? on the way out, Because okay. <laughs> what I wanna do is We're I want- cooking here, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> I wanna coat uh, every little crack and corner there. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Before it goes in. I wanna get in right into the oil. Nice. Move okay. it away from me. I'm a bit of yeah. a wimp, so I don't like any kind of splatter. <laughs> so I like enough. to move it away from me yeah. before we have it going. I don't think that's considered wimpy, but to be honest. <laughs> so my middle cook here is going to read the bill. He's going to call out. He's going to ask for so much fish. Yeah. Uh, by so much, meaning several hundred pieces per day. Yeah, I was going to say you guys must go through just hundreds of hundreds of pounds of fish, hey? Eh? Oh yeah. Like, what, what would you day. say? Sort what of we're doing here is like our fish are weighed and cut to four ounce portions. Right, nice. Minimum four ounce per piece. And we do several hundred per day. Oh, wow. So. And you do all sorts of different things too, not just halibut, right? Like not you just do... halibut. I mean, we do excellent burgers. We've got a fantastic seafood chowder, winning awards all over for the chowder. Nice. It's probably one of the few items here that we routinely sell out of night yeah. after night. Perfect. Seafood chowder is amazing. I like your wiggle technique. I might have to adapt you that like into, my, uh, okay. into my kitchen. There we I go. Think. So, um, That's... so what I'm going to do here now, I'm going to just lift it from the oil. We're just gonna let that drain. And I wanna be able to allow it to drain for a good 15 to 20 seconds, right? Yeah, absolutely. Before, before we serve. Just helps release all that oil. Not only does it uh, does it make it like lighter and crispier, and not so oily in the pan, but saves you some oil too, doesn't it? It sure does, and I'm cheap. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> now, how would we serve this? I know we have one set up here. All right, so Can I bring the basket over here? to you? Yeah, let's do this. So This probably isn't traditional as to how it would happen here on a busy, busy <laughs> so day. So we're but... all ready to serve. I'm gonna yeah. grab this piece of halibut here. Place that right over on top. We've got a piece ready to go out. Look at that. Look at that. I'm just going to show, show the folks at home here. Look. So this, this must be our tartar sauce. That's our tartar sauce, There's yeah. There's our halibut, nice and crispy, some delicious coleslaw, and of course the lemon. Can I squeeze that right on there? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, there we go. Oh, listen to that sizzle. It's fantastic. That batter looks so crispy. Do you mind if I dig in? Let's do it. All right. I'm going to pop now. it down over here. <laughs> I know, hey? Let's see how we go here. Oh, yeah. Nice and crispy. Look at that, flaky. Oh wow, can't let that piece get away. Mmm, <laughs> beautiful. Should try some of our homemade tartar here. Oh. Maybe it'll cool it down it's a little delicious. bit for you. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? Smoking hot, but that's fantastic. <laughs> it is still so moist, that's really lovely. Matt, you're, uh, you're knocking it out of the park here. <laughs> knocking this right off the wharf, I think. Mm. Oh wow. Very unique and delicious. I can't get over how crispy it is. Matt, buddy, I got a bit of a greasy hand here, but uh, I got a flower hand. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> a match made in heaven. Thanks very much for letting us Thank come on you. here today. My pleasure. I know you got a super busy service, but I'm not going to get out of here without finishing this, uh, <laughs> this fish and chips. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> Let's dig in. to our kitchen where we're working on cedar wrapped cake with charred and dried strawberries, basil syrup and balsamic. Okay, now you're probably thinking at home, 
what the heck are all these combinations of flavors doing? Trust me, these all work really, really well together. Strawberries, basil go hand in hand. Uh, strawberries and balsamic go really, really well together. We've got that orange flavor in the cake with the cedar. It's all kind of this earthy sort of real West Coast feel. So, got these lovely strawberries here. And as you probably already know, strawberries are the first fruit to ripen in the spring. And then you can get all kinds of different varieties. You get the ever-bearing ones that uh, produce strawberries all season long, which is amazing. What we want to do here is add a little extra flavor and some depth to these strawberries. So we're going to char them. We've got a cast iron pan on the stove, getting nice and hot. And we're just going to drop whole strawberries right into that pan. And we're going to let them kind of do their magic and kind of get this, you know, sort of dark, sort of charred flavor, OK? So in they're going to go just to a dry cast iron pan. And here it's sizzling there. All right, and then we're going to let that pan do its job. We really want to create like this, this depth of flavor and again, that charred color on there, OK? And then we'll turn our attention to our basil syrup. I've got some simple syrup here that I'm just going to pour into our blender. Uh, about two to one, you want a fairly thick syrup. Let it cool down at before you put it in your uh, container here like this. There we are. Look at those strawberries, they're starting to dance. That's that charring taking place already and it's kind of pushing the moisture in the strawberry all around which will make them move like that, which is pretty cool. Okay, basil. Mmm, beautiful green, fresh basil. We want a fair bit of this in here since it's the, uh, you know, part of the dish, the basil syrup. Just give it a little slice so that the uh, blender doesn't have to do all the work for you. And that way you can just blitz it quickly so you don't actually break down the, uh, the flavors and so on. If you puree it too much or you pulse it too much, it starts to taste a little grassy and we don't want that. Okay, there we are into our syrup. And this is such a unique flavor. It's got that sweet sort of floral. Just one of my favorites. This dessert will sure to knock people's socks off. Okay. And it goes. Give it a quick blitz. Have a look at it. I want to break up a little bit more than that. There we go. We're starting to see that green color come through. Flavoring all, imparting all the flavors into our syrup, breaking down. And then when we plate this, it's gonna have really cool green specks too that's gonna add a, a real unique touch to our dish. Let's have a look here. I got a spoon. You can kind of see all those little flakes of basil. Looks great. Mm. Mm. Again, basil has that sort of floral texture or flavor to it. It's amazing. Check our strawberries. Give them a little turn, see if we got some color on them yet. There we are, yep, that's what we're looking for. And then let's have a look at our cakes. So again, through the magic of television, you don't want to sit there and watch a cake cook all day. Uh, we have some pre-done, take them out, let them cool on a, on a rack or on your cutting board here for a little bit or on your or sheet pan, and just let them cool down so that you're able to touch them. And then look at that, doesn't that look incredible? And now we want to start plating this guy. This one here looks like my favorite. We can peel off the string. But if you want, you can leave the string on. It adds a unique touch to it as well. Peel off the string, and we'll just set that right there. I've got some balsamic right here. The balsamic has had a chance to reduce. So we just put it in, let it reduce by half or until it gets to sort of a, a thicker consistency. You can see here by just running my spoon through it, it's got a little better viscosity than, uh, than when we started, so that's great. But let's get some on our plate here. Okay, just gonna drizzle that around. Very nice. We don't have to be too precise here. We're having fun, right? You can see our strawberry chips are ready to go. Let's check our charred strawberries here. So they're starting to soften. Their juices are starting to come out and getting that depth of flavor. I'm not trying to burn them. We're just warming them up sort of thing. Very nice. Okay, let's spoon some of our basil syrup on the plate here. Again, all about the drizzle. Just having some fun here. Pour some right on top. There we go. Awesome, some strawberry chips. How nice and crispy these turned out. Still got some lovely color there. I'm gonna put them around. Pick out your favorite ones. There we go. Plating this uh, kind of backwards so it's a little bit harder to see, but that looks great. Let's try one. Mmm, very nice. Now some charred strawberries. Let's pull out our couple of really nice charred strawberries here. There's one. Find the ones that got the nicest sort of color. There's number two. Oh, here's a nice one. We'll set that one right there. Awesome. And what's missing here? That's about it. We can put some basil on. So that's our garnish. 
We got some of these gorgeous edible flowers here. I like this one. And there we have it. Cedar wrapped cake with charred and dried strawberries, basil, and balsamic. Doesn't that look incredible? Now what better way to try this unique West Coast dessert than with a really great West Coast cocktail. With me today, Stuart, how are you, mate? Doing well, Garrett, thank Stuart, you. you're here from the uh, Liquor Planet in Axe and Barrel. Yes, sir, I am. Very cool, very cool. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what you're bringing. So today I brought you guys a watermelon lemonade with a uh, honey shine from Divine Distillery. Nice, cool. Out in Sandishton. Yeah, yeah. So locally made, uh, that's yeah. all the all the rage these days. Hey, that's what Axe and Barrel is all about. We try to stock as so much of that at Liquor Planet and nice, very cool. all that stuff. Cool, so what's the procedure here? What do we do? So what I'll do is I'll put a half an ounce of the Divine Honey Shine. Very nice. In each of our little glasses and here. You said this is a mead that's distilled in. It's distilled so in it's barrels, a right? distilled mead, then okay. aged in ex bourbon casks. So once oh. a bourbon is aged, yep. they'll then sell the cask companies to give that nice dark Save charred bourbon flavor. All right, that makes sense. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, and, and meads, I mean, they're an ancient. Uh, uh, Vikings alcohol, drank them, they're right? fantastic. So, yeah, so yeah, they exactly. gotta be good, right? <laughs> So and there's something special about this uh, watermelon lemonade that as you well. So as this, well, right? This watermelon lemonade, not store bought, again, locally made by the Very chef cool. Chad Martin at Axe and Barrel. Yeah. Oh, a little bit of that. That looks great. Oh yeah, it's gorgeous. It's nice and dry, but Excellent. then at the same time, sweet, crisp, perfect for summer. Perfect. Well, let's uh, not wait too long here. It smells delicious already. Mm. Oh. Holy smokes, that's dangerous right there. Oh, it's a, it's a little too good. <laughs> it is. Well, let's see how it works out with this. Now, I'm thinking that the uh, the honey mead there will work really well with the char on the strawberries, because, you know, bourbon and char goes exactly. really well together. Exactly, char and so. char. Never yep. hurts. And then this cake here, too, we got to give it a whirl. Sort of have some fun. It's wrapped in cedar, so don't eat the cedar around it, but uh, dig into the cake and try some of that. Strawberry, some of the balsamic. There's basil on here, too. All these flavors work really well together. Oh, exactly. Hmm. Very nice. And I think you're gonna do a great job of the pairing here. Oh, man. <laughs> That's a refreshing dessert and a refreshing drink. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks so much, Stuart. I really appreciate it, buddy. No problem. Thank you. Check out our website. We'll find more information on today's show and maybe a few surprises. I'm Garrett Shack. Thanks for watching and don't forget to savor the flavor. Let's keep going on this. The cake's super moist, eh? It goes really well with the dryness of the watermelon. <laughs>